Hi, I'm Larry Karaszewski and this is Trailers from Hell. Right now we're going to take a look at a movie that is often called the Gone with the Wind of martial arts movies. This should have been the start of a huge Hollywood career for Bruce Lee, but sadly that was not to be. Released shortly after the star's death, Enter the Dragon is the film that has come to define his persona and legend, much in the same way that Rebel Without a Cause did for James Dean. It's a stunning piece of work. On a mysterious island in the South China Sea, in the late 60s and early 70s, Bruce Lee was treated pretty badly by Hollywood. After appearing as Cato in the Green Hornet TV show, his career options were few. Bruce beats up James Gardner's office in Marlowe and teaches James Franciscus how to fight in the blind detective series Longstreet, but despite his obvious charisma, starring parts were not coming his way. He developed a TV show, but it's nipped in the bud because networks don't think America is ready for an Asian lead. The show later morphs into Kung Fu starring David Carradine in Yellowface. Frustrated, Bruce heads to Hong Kong and hooks up with Raymond Chow's Golden Harvest Film Company. They make two films back to back that just explode in the international marketplace. The Big Boss and Fist of Furies break box office records everywhere. Sort of like the way Clint Eastwood Italian Westerns finally earned him leading man status in the United States, Bruce's chop socky blockbusters brought in Hollywood offers. But they still hedged their bets. End of the Dragon looks great, but was shot on a made-for-TV budget. And Warner Brothers surrounded Bruce with two American co-stars, the fabulous Jim Kelly, hired to bring in the exploitation crowd, and leading man John Saxon, brought in to add a little class. Saxon was coming off of a Golden Globe nomination for working with Marlon Brando in The Appaloosa. The producers were originally considering William Smith for Saxon's role. Bruce Lee watched a film Smith starred in called Darker Than Amber. He rejected Smith, but he loved the rough and tumble way a fight scene was shot, so Amber's director Robert Klaus was soon hired for Enter the Dragon. The script for Dragon is by Michael Allen, a writer I quite admire. He gets credit on two other cult favorites of mine, Truck Turner with Isaac Hayes and the Dino De Laurentiis version of Flash Gordon. Allen apparently didn't get along that well with Bruce Lee, who was always trying to work his martial arts philosophy into the screenplay. I'm sure Allen thought it was hooey, but it's actually what elevates Dragon into greatness. Bruce Lee obviously didn't know he was going to die, but he clearly knew this was his shot. He wanted this to be more than just a performance. It was his mission statement. Adding dialogue and philosophical bits like the art of fighting without fighting and emotional content, not anger, gives the movie a soul. Actually, my favorite scene in the film is not an action sequence. It's Bruce Lee standing over his sister's grave, wearing an impeccably tailored suit, apologizing for the violence that he knows is coming. It's a strong, beautiful moment. And a word about that sister, Angela Mao, a Chinese superstar in her own right. She has only one scene, but she almost steals the picture. Actually, the whole cast is given great moments. Jim Kelly's You Come Right Out of a Comic Book speech, John Saxon's fight with Bolo, uh, you know, an early appearance by Sammo Hung, and of course, the evil Mr. Han. The climax is a showstopper, a brutal fight in a hall of mirrors that's a throwback to Lady from Shanghai. You wonder what Bruce Lee could have accomplished if he had lived, but I guess we should just be grateful that at least we'll always have Enter the Dragon. This is Enter the Dragon where the world's greatest martial arts athletes meet the ultimate challenge with the most ancient and deadly of weapons, the human body. Enter the Dragon, filmed in Panavision by Warner Brothers.